Excuse me, little dog. <clears> Hi, <throat> oh, guys. Well, it is a chilly May. May. It is a chilly, well, it might as well be a May or an April night. Here in late July, uh, that would be Friday, July 26, 2024, as I'm sitting here in my flannel bathrobe and my Uggs on this cold spring or cold fall evening here on July 26. So I noticed the goldenrod is in bloom. <clears throat> my burning bush is turning red. The sumac is starting to change color. The leaves are falling off the apple trees. And it is late July. The world has gone crazy. And so we can expect that to happen. The, we can expect the world to keep going crazy. That is going to happen. But being Friday, it is time for our ain't gonna happen roundup rant where I just simply <clears throat> click on the mainstream media and medium.com for finding out of all the things that ain't gonna happen and I did a full rant so I'm not going to repeat the story about anyone thinking that um, the United States is going to leave fossil fuels in the ground uh, ain't gonna happen. Makes no difference who is in the White House. Those fossil fuels are coming out of the ground as fast as they can. Uh, that is gonna happen. Uh, so we're gonna skip over that. So uh, I'm gonna put the little dog to bed here. And we are going, all right, little dog, you settle in the bed. We're going to uh, see what's on the ain't going to happen roster on the mainstream media. And let's start out with our favorite globalist apocalyptimist. That would, of course, be the, uh, the pseudo- Doomer in chief over there at the UN, our old buddy Antonio Guterres. What is on Antonio Guterres's mind? UN Secretary General calls for action. Calls for action to curb extreme heat. Yes, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres issued an urgent call to action. We have an urgent call to action. After the world experienced its hottest day on record on Monday, he said, quote, this past Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday were the three hottest days on record. But let's face facts. Extreme temperatures are no longer a one-day, one-week, or one-month phenomenon. If there is one thing that unites our divided world, it's that we are all increasingly feeling the heat. He says while wearing a flannel bathrobe and Uggs in July. Yes, Earth is becoming hotter and more dangerous for everyone everywhere except at Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York, baby. So anyway, Antonio has four critical areas in his call to action. So this is the four-point plan to save humanity from extreme heat. Yes, Guterres called for urgent action and international cooperation to address the extreme heat in four critical areas. Yes, these include caring for populations that are vulnerable to climate change, like caring for sub-Saharan Africans, protecting exposed workers and ensuring their safety, uh-huh, 
boosting the resilience of economies and societies by using data and science. Yes, and obviously, topping the list, last but not least, limiting the temperature rise to one and a half C by phasing out fossil fuels and increasing investment in renewable energy. There you go. Uh, and obviously, uh, Antonio Guterres is not a reader of The Guardian uh, talking about how fossil fuel uh, extraction has absolutely exploded uh, in the United States uh, since Joe Biden came in to save the planet. Uh, what does Guterres say about that? Quote, in signing such a surge of new oil and gas leases, they are signing away our future. Yes, they are. But don't worry. As the, uh, the Green New Deal is now looking to dormant volcanoes, we're going to start mining dormant volcanoes, you know, so we don't have to uh, dig up the planet to save the planet. All we have to do, <clears throat> you know, is send like, a, I guess, robots or sub-Saharan African children, one or the other, uh, down inside volcanoes and just scoop up the magma. That shit is full of all kinds of stuff to save the planet. Yes. Uh, but, I love this guy's name, promoting mining volcanoes to save the planet. But Blundy made it clear <clears throat> that the research is still in its infancy in any real world application of what the team may learn is a long way off. <clears throat> Blundy said, so I think maybe not in my lifetime, but in my children's lifetime. Yes, getting metals and energy out of underground fluids will feature very extensively in resources of the future. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Are we back to Guterres or is, uh, uh, no, this is, do you remember Christina Figueres? Christina Figueres, I like that woman. She is the former head of UN climate negotiations. So we're going to, I should have gone from Antonio to Christina, but uh, this is just as in the order they rolled off. So what does Christina have to say? <clears throat> Humanity will, quote, scorch and fry. Thank you, Christina, for summing it up. <clears throat> You know, this is this broken record rant, you know, about uh, how Monday was the hottest day in the history of uh, at least humanity, I guess. Uh, many stories on this. Uh, <clears throat> responding to this in a statement to the AP, Former head of UN climate negotiations, Christina Figueres, said humanity will scorch and fry. Scorch and fry. Close quote. If the world does not implement, quote, targeted national policies that enable 
that transformation. There we go. Uh, well, uh, there, 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 there you go. Uh, so if that is the way to keep humans from scorching and frying, since that won't happen, I guess humans are going to scorch and fry. Um, all right. Okay. You know, the Telegraph over there in England is kind of like Fox News over here. Not quite as right wing as Fox News, but, uh, you know, kind of that ilk. <clears throat> but, you know, as Alex Jones says, even a broken clock is, is right twice a day. And the Telegraph does a pretty good job talking about the failure of carbon capture. Now, you know, this is, I'm talking about England, but what's good or bad for England, same thing here. <clears throat> How the failure of carbon capture risks causing a net zero nightmare. So again, this is from England, but uh, you can extrapolate it to the U.S. Ed Miliband, whoever that is, has promised to drastic, drastically speed up Britain's net zero transition, but the scale of the task facing the energy secretary was laid bare in a damning report from the National Audit Office published on Tuesday. Officials told the energy secretary that a staggering 630 million English pounds of taxpayer cash has already been spent on carbon capture technology that is still years away from working. Not only did they point to the amount of investment at risk, but also stress that the government's overarching goal to capture up to 30 million tons of CO2 by 2030 is way off track. Uh, driving this underperformance is the fact that four key carbon ca capture projects are already years behind schedule, the NAO said, which is without recognizing the untested technology and uncertain cost. Crucially, it also warned that the 20 billion pounds of public money set aside to develop carbon capture is unlikely to be enough and far more may be needed. These findings pose a net zero nightmare for both Labor and Mr. Miliband. Uh, under Labor's green energy plans, carbon capture and storage technologies are being relied on to strip up to 30 million tons of CO2 from UK emissions each year by 2030 and more than 100 million tons by 2050. Ain't gonna happen. All right. Let's, uh, let's go over, well, I guess, I don't know, is Truth Dig the former home of uh, Chris Hedges, those lefties over at Truth Dig, uh, are they the mainstream media or not? Their lead-off story in Truth Dig this week, why... Harris beats Trump. I have wasted enough of my breath on that. I guess I'm getting a little bit of pushback from my prediction 
that uh, Donald Trump is going to beat uh, Kamala Harris by the biggest landslide since 1936. Uh, well, maybe I stepped a toe over the line, but uh, it might not beat uh, 36, but it'll be some, looking something like what was it, uh, the Nixon-McGovern uh, stomping? When was the Nixon-McGovern stomping? Was that 1972? Uh, it's going to be kind of a replay of the Nixon-McGovern stomp. All right. <clears throat> Moving over to medium.com. Uh, this is a little bit of a schizophrenic article from this fellow, Mike Meyer. Uh, I really like the name of his essay, but I can't quite figure out what he's talking about. The name of the essay is <laughs> Hopeful Delusions. Hopeful Delusions. And he spends, uh, th this is Mike Meyer weighing in on, uh, you know, basically what it means if uh, Kamala Harris does beat uh, Donald Trump, which of course ain't going to happen. Um, but then he, he, he looks at the most hopeful delusions which is anybody so deluded thinking that uh, Kamala Harris uh, is going to do a goddamn thing to uh, turn this freight train around. But he keeps, you know, he admits he, he's digging... Uh, So, uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs from this. Many of us dealing with cultural, economic, political, and climate collapse have realized in the last few years that any huh, hopeful future must follow that collapse. That realization may have been earlier for some with a more robust scientific background. The core of that brutal reality is our inability to implement anything like the levels of change needed to slow, let alone stop, this slide into planetary catastrophe. For those of us living in America, this has been growing helplessness and guilt in the face of our political system's failure to deal with the absurdity of late-stage radical capitalism that defines the American empire and our current reality. And uh, then he segues in to uh, the election and uh, looking, he, 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 you know, he fully admits that uh, with, with Joe Biden uh, that there was no hope. It, it, it was, you know, uh, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, no fucking difference, frying pan of the fire, and so now he's, uh, he, 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 you know, trying to trying to find the H word uh, with Kamala throwing her panties in the ring. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Nothing happening in America now will significantly affect the impending Collapse, which was the main message uh, in my rant a few days ago. It makes no difference as far as the impending collapse 
nothing, nothing will significantly, and I wouldn't even put the qualifier significantly, affect the impending collapse. The collapse results from the climate disaster that cannot be stopped. It ain't gonna happen. And that will trigger population movement and changes wiping out the existing economic structure within the next few years and causing significant death and destruction. And then he looks, uh, is Kamala Harris up to the, <laughs> up to the job? Uh, he, uh, he doesn't see, a. Uh, a lot of uh, the H word here, partly because America is owned and operated by the military industrial complex as a late stage capitalist system dedicated to asset destruction, financialization, and planetary domination. There is little chance that Kamala Harris or any American president would be allowed to do any of these, you know, talking about what an American president would, would, would have to do uh, to overturn the, uh, the military industrial complex and late stage capitalism. It ain't gonna happen. Uh, Kamala Harris is a child of the military industrial complex and late stage capitalism. Even if she wanted to, there's not a fucking thing she could do, even if she wanted to, and she doesn't want to, so it ain't gonna happen. But she ain't gonna get elected, so it's kind of a... Uh, a non-starter. All right. This is this article by some fellow never heard of, Ben Shred Hewitt. Uh, speed is as important as scale. Why slowing down might save the earth. This is a very good article, which is could be uh, worth a whole rant, but I don't have time to it here. But you know, he's talking about that, uh, you know, all, all these people talking about, uh, you know, all the shit coming down the pike. But what he's talking about is all the, uh, that, that, you know, all of this shit is speeding up. Uh, it's speeding up. And so while we're talking about bringing down the scale that we also need to be talking about putting the brakes on. Uh, and, and it just uh, it ain't, ain't gonna happen. Uh, so, what can we do to decelerate? What can we do to put the brakes on? It might be tempting to suggest radical solutions to slow warming down, at least for the short term. For example, solar dimming is proposed as a way to slow warming while we wean off fossil fuels, which ain't going to happen. But solar dimming is at least a 200-year prospect, and stopping it sooner could lead to a sudden jump in temperatures thus leading to exactly the situation we need to avoid change happening too fast. <clears throat> Other geoengineering, especially softer varieties, might be more appropriate. Sir David King has proposed seeding Arctic clouds, which would reflect sunlight and help Arctic sea ice persist longer or at least disappear more s slowly. Pleistocene, p 
part in Siberia is using the action of reintroduced megafauna to slow permafrost thawing. And this example could be expanded across Russia, Canada, and Scandinavia. Even if both these methods only slowed down their respective tipping points, it would make the new state they flip to less divergent from the present. Anyway, uh, slowing down often does not require anything radically new. Just putting the brakes on existing modes of operation. But this approach poses a quandary even if the overall goal is to slow down certain aspects of the modern world, the carbon-based energy system, for example, must be rapidly scaled down to avoid unlivable climate breakdown. Anyway, uh, good luck on putting the brakes on. I might have to get to this story, early humans, early humans likely prompted the demise of woolly mammoths and other ancient species tomorrow, but we're going to close with this article, uh, which might or might not have anything to do with the collapse of civilization and the planet, probably has more to do with it than you think. The fourth biggest story on the planet on Yahoo News right now from good old CBS. <clears throat> Chicken wings sold as boneless can include bones, court rules. Restaurant patrons who order chicken wings marketed as boneless cannot expect them to actually be boneless according to a Thursday ruling from the Ohio Supreme Court. The decision comes in the case of this guy. So anyway, he, he, he was eating a boneless chicken wing when he, got a, when, when he got a piece of chicken wing bone stuck in his throat, uh, and this led to a bacterial infection in his thoracic cavity and lingering medical problems, including difficulty breathing. I can certainly relate. Maybe I have a boneless chicken wing bone in my throat. Uh, Berkheimer alleged the restaurant's menu had no warning to indicate that its boneless wings could actually contain bones. And he sued for negligence and breach of warranty among other claims. But in Thursday's 4-3 ruling, the Ohio, the Ohio Supreme Court said boneless wings, boneless wings refers to a cooking style, a cooking style, and that Berkheimer should have been on guard against bones since it is common knowledge that chickens have bones. The high court sided with lower courts that had dismissed his suit. Okay, this is Justice Joseph T. Dieters writing for the majority. Quote, a diner reading the words boneless wings on a menu would no more believe that the restaurant was warranting the absence of bones in the items than believe that the items were made from chicken wings. A diner reading boneless wings on a menu would no more believe 
that the restaurant was warranting the absence of bones in the items than believe that the items called boneless wings were made from chicken wings. Just as a person eating chicken fingers would know that he had not been served fingers. The food items label on the menu described a cooking style. It was not a guarantee. Uh, and I will leave the ain't gonna happen uh, roundup rant right there because I think Sandy's show is coming on and uh, I'm sure she'll be talking about a lot of shit that is going to happen. I, I think she's talking about melting glaciers. I think she and Jennifer are on. Imagine Sandy and Jennifer talking about shit melting all over the planet. But the ice in my margarita seems to be safe on this chilly night. So no ice melt in my margarita. Get out there and enjoy your icy margarita on a cold winter night. Well, you still can. There's that little bulb. Yes, little dog. Are you enjoying this cold winter night? Ah, <sighs> my guys.